pleasure to introduce uh, Abdullahi Arabo, and I hope I have pronounced your name okay, if not, <laughs> if not correctly. Uh, so, uh, and the, so the, the topic of the talk is authenticity in delivering contextual pedagogy and materials in cybersecurity, which is a hot topic, isn't it? Over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, uh, basically, I will share with you what I've been doing in reference to trying to make things more letters for my students in terms of teaching. Uh, and authenticity becomes a key part for me in many ways. Uh, let me see how to control the slides first. I cannot control them. So, Peter, can you go to the next slide, please, if you don't mind? Yeah, thank you very much, Peter. So I'm um, focusing on three main issues. Basically, it's about you as a lecturer, or as someone delivering the content, and then we look at the content delivery themselves, and then the assessment. And I will share with you how can we make all those three principles be more authentic as time goes by. Uh, they are linked in one principle in many ways, and linking them together, being authentic in each one of them, will allow you to be able to make things more interesting for your co for the cohorts and also to deliver things and make things a bit of more up to date as time goes by. Uh, Peter, next slide, please. So about yourself. I what I've learned is that yeah, it's good for me to be vulnerable to my student, uh, to let them know actually that I'm there to teach them as a mentor, but at the same time I'm happy for them to challenge my ideas or to advise me or to get let me know what's going on. So sometimes if you are too rigid and you say, OK, I'm the one who knows everything and you try to be a, have that in a authority, it makes them a bit more unengaging with you as time goes by. But letting them know from day one that actually that's who am I, that's what I can do for you. I'm open to, to discussion with you a, a, on a level, then that makes it a bit interesting for them to see what's going on. Uh, don't yeah so that's what one key second over here is be open uh, uh, with them so allow them to share their experiences as they come into the teaching uh, most of them have different experiences as they come in some of them are mature some of them are, are after a levels but it depends on which level you're teaching but they all bring in their experience as time goes by so if you're open uh, to them and then care about what they are doing and where they came from then that makes things a bit more interesting in terms of how you deliver your context. The context, by the way, I means that yeah, although the syllabus are fixed, uh, but in cybersecurity as a field that I'm working on, uh, things change every single day or actually every hour. Uh, so in that way, how can you make things more easier for them to grasp as time goes by? How can they apply things in real situations? So by, by, me, by being able to connect with them, and, be, and show some care about who they are, that allows you to make this more interesting for the in terms of delivery. Encourage to participate. Uh, everywhere you teach, you find that some of them, they are a bit shy to participate. And so maybe what you can do is, how can you entice them to say, okay, look, how can we, how can you get engaged? Ask them, ask them to get engaged in menus, either as a, a lecture room or in your small cohorts, but allow them to participate in your course as time goes by. Sometimes it's all it's good to use personal examples. It allows them to know what's going on. Uh, and, uh, and over here, you have to be a bit, a bit, a bit careful because uh, your core comes from different, different backgrounds, different sensitivity. So if you give an example about somebody else about a different country, some of them might feel offended about why you're doing that. So for me, it's easy for me to give an example about my own self, my own experience. Uh, that way, I don't compromise anybody else in the in the court, and they feel connected with me as time goes by. So this allows them to understand what's going on and makes it easier for them in many ways. Uh, if you're able to, to know who they are in the court, use an example about them, not not mentioning their name in particular, but about their own what their experiences. That makes them feel feel connected with you as as as, as a whole. And it allows them to, to be more engaged with you and to be more authentic as time goes by. If you have anything from the cohort that you don't know much about them, as time goes by, know who they are, what they are doing, and also reflect back on, on, on the experience from last last cohort that you have. So uh, like this year, I get an example about somebody in my class who 
on their first day, they are struggling about the whole concept of cybersecurity, what they are doing. But as time as time goes by, they became more confident and end up having one of the best marks in the module as time goes by. So give me that example. Those who are a bit scared about what's going on, they see what's possible for them to go as time goes by. Next slide, please, Peter. OK, how do you how do you look at materials themselves? Uh, syllabus are designed for, well, quite a while before you teach them. Cybersecurity, as I said earlier on, change every single day. Although it's the same principles, but what you can do is to make some use of authentic sources that are current. So what I do before my lecture, I, I always look at uh, what happens in the media, and what happens in, in R&D. I have some industrial links that I work with and try and bring those examples to give them a real life example for them to know what's going on in the real world. Actually, uh, last, uh, last year, uh, when the attacks happened in the, in the UK live, as they happen on that week, I changed my entire, my, my entire lecture purely on that subject only. So that gives them on how they can relate what they have learned in the in the cohort, in the syllabus, on what happened in real life in the, in the world. Even currently about what happening again, not, not playing politics, what happening in Russia and Ukraine, in, about cybersecurity, is always features in my lectures every single week of, of my lectures. And that allows them to understand that that's what the textbook says, that's what the theory says, but I apply that in my real situation and that's how it applies in the real world. It goes further than that in my practicals that of course is, my course is, is, is hands on. I use this, I, I, I try to provide some environment for them to experiment on those kind, kind of attacks that are happening. So they, they, they are able to, 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 to do the attack in a simulation environment in real life situation. So it allows you to create, to create an environment for them that allows, that fosters that creativity and that fosters them to understand that actually we are here to learn and we are here to see what's going on. Going further than that, uh, where possible, I bring in some industry experts uh, to be able to get involved with me to make sure that uh, to deliver things live in a way. So mostly I bring back as my previous students from a uh, final year who have joined industry, working in the industry. And they come back and say, oh, look, by the way, that's what that's how, how I applied what I have learned in this module in my current job as time goes by. So that gives them a bit of context on how are they going to be able to continue further in terms of their career perspective. That requires you to have some dynamic thinking or think on the spot, which we all do in many ways. But in cybersecurity, it's a bit more challenging in the sense that uh, sometimes the attack happens before your lecture, or you don't, you don't even know about the attacks. But because you are doing it on a week-by-week basis, basis, some of them will tell you about, oh, by the way, this attack happened today or yesterday, and you don't know about it. So it's for you to be authentic to yourself. Okay, look, I haven't heard about it, but tell me a bit about more about the attack. Learn about that and then allow them to contextualize the attack in the real life as time goes by. So teaching in my, in my own understanding or in my own experience requires, requires me to work that in many ways as time goes by. Uh, every cohort in the in the in the uh, every individual in the cohort should be seen as individual member. So uh, and that gives you a one one to one touch between you and them. Yeah, that encourages them to share their experiences as, as well. Because some of them, they, if you don't give an example that uh, that links to where, where they came from or about them, they feel lost as time goes by. But being able to give them those examples that they can picture themselves doing that, that makes it a bit, a bit more authentic for them and interesting for them as well. And they can apply that as time goes by. It happens with the fact that uh, the more I do it, the more I, I'm stopped in the corridor in the university, I'm stopped, oh, by the way, Abdullahi, have you seen about A, B, C, and D? Which I haven't seen, but that makes it a bit more interesting as time goes by. Hey, Peter, next slide, please. So, so after you have been authentic yourself, and you have been able to contextualize your materials. Then, then that's this the question. How do you put that into, into your assessments? Uh, in cybersecurity, uh, although we teach them about attacks, but attacks change every, every time, although they are similar, but they change in, in patterns. So the only way we can do that 
is by me trying to what I've been doing in the university is I use my industrial contacts. Last year, uh, one of the companies was hacked. And they called me for help. Told them, look, I can help you myself, but I prefer to give you my students to help you. So I I I I, I took off my 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 good my, my three good ones, uh, students amongst them. I said, okay, look, that's my three good ones. They will do they, they will do the job for you. I will I will guide them towards it. Instead of me doing the, 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 it, it for them as time goes by, then I, I, I they are able to do that as you have to help them in many ways. So, so I'm there to monitor what's going on. So that allows them to apply uh, their principle, what we taught them in the real life situation. That gives them more example as time goes by. Uh, again, for the entire cohort, my course of every year is about life pen testing. So there's something called a uh, uh, bug bounty. So I find companies that, that agree for us to, to hack them. I say, okay, look, by the way, I've taught you about, about hacking throughout the semester, now grab one company for me and please hack them for me and give me a report. Yeah, so what they do, they have that and, and that, that, that makes them to utilize their, so again, going back to my previous slides, I've been able to link to them about that, that's what I'm teaching you, that's how you apply in real life situation, in teaching. So now they apply it in real life situation for their own coursework. And that's where they do some attacks. Actually, every year, I have two or three that found great vulnerability from companies and they report it to them and possibly they get paid for that. So that's how things come over here as time goes by. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, uh, 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 allows them to make things as time goes by. So uh, the last one over here, real, real, life, uh, uh, real life exploit. When lock for shell, sorry about the technical terms, but the attack last year happens. Uh, that was become part of my lab that I've done. And it allows them to see, okay, that's the attack happening. I created a virtual environment for them to, to experiment, experiment on that. And that gives them a bit of flavor of what's going on in many ways after, as time goes by. Peter, I think, my, I think that's my last slide. So I've seen many things going on on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the chat. I'm trying to figure out. But I think I've, I've given you enough time to go through it. Hopefully, I haven't rushed through the slides myself. Thank you very much, by the way. Thank you, Abdullahi. And uh, again, round of, round of applause, please. And thank you for being so uh, spot on time because I previously forgot to say that I was going to tell you to wrap up by yeah. sending a heart <laughs> to everybody, but obviously I forgot to say. Yeah, that's right. So apologies for that. So I've already made two mistakes. Um, so a couple of questions that came from the chat. Well, somebody uh, who is very interested in your uh, sort of authentic approach asks uh, about whether your students are undergraduates or postgraduate students. So I think that that again, perhaps you could continue the conversation later. But I think that that's the first question that. It's came. both. I, I teach both. I teach both levels, uh, but it depends on the level. I give them different scenarios. So on the undergraduate one, I don't give them, I, I don't, well, for the company that have been hacked, I give it to my undergraduate level at that time. Uh, but, uh, but again, it is on a scenario that, that, that's at play, but I teach both undergraduate and, and MSc at the same time. And I apply the same principle in both of them, but, but how I apply them depends on their level of expertise. Thank you, brilliant. Um, there, there was another sort of uh, conversation, very interesting conversation going on in the in the chat about uh, the dynamic thinking. Your concepts, or you explained about dynamic thinking and about again the curriculum moving perhaps slower than the discipline. So uh, I wonder if you could again expand perhaps a little bit on that concept of dynamicity in uh, sort of in 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 authentic teaching. Okay. What I mean over here is that, yeah, uh, uh, actually, I, I learned about that when I did my PhD. After my PhD, I was working before I did my, my Viva. So I was I was going uh, by train to my Viva uh, for my PhD, and I grabbed the metro paper on the train uh, and, read, and flipped, flipped through it. And I, I found an article about security on that. Mm -hmm. I went for my Viva, and my, my external examiner asked me, how does your PhD apply today? So I flipped to the, 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 the paper paper asking, okay, by the way, have you, have you seen this news today? So I have seen, okay, that's the news happening today. And that's how my page applies to what's happening currently at, at the moment. So what I mean is that, yeah, although the syllabus are, are been, have been there for ages or the attack have been there for ages, but in security, every day attacks happens. 
So it's for me as a mentor, I, I see myself as a mentor, not a, a, a lecturer. It's for me to look and say, okay, tell me, oh, by the way, that's the vulnerability that happened 10 years ago. But by the way, although we know about the vulnerability, but even yesterday or today, company A has been hacked by that. So they haven't learned from their mistake. Yeah, so that that requires to be to be more dynamic. So it's, it, it, it sometimes it forces you, it, but I, I won't lie to you, by the way, it's time consuming. Yeah, to know what's going on, all the time consuming, but doing that allow you to be to reflect what's going on and then allow and then, uh, yeah, so so that 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 makes it interesting for them as students. And I'm, I'm going back to my to my, to my, five of my PhD, the external examiner, when I told him that, he was shocked about it. Because he never expected somebody to 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 show in, in in his paper that I'm telling about how how they feel linked link to what they're happening. So that means that yeah, you have to be always on the edge in security. We're, we're not in all field by the in all field, but I'm talking about cyber security. So I mean, you have to be more up to terms and discuss as time goes by. Yes, and again, more comments on this are coming in. Uh, again, linking back to the to to other sort of topics discussed this morning about being in a field rather than knowing about the field, and sort of keeping developing the field as well as or in uh, sort of in parallel with developing yourself as uh, uh, or your expertise, as Helen is saying, as 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 a uh, a teacher. So I I think we have one minute more, and there is a concept that came up at the very beginning of your um, of your uh, talk that uh, people have picked up on, and that is the concept of vul vulnerability and being uh, sort of being vulnerable. You 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 kind of implied that, or allowing yourself better, even better expression. Uh, to be vulnerable is very much linked to being authentic. And I wonder if you could explore that a little bit more in relation to perhaps, uh, again, expertise and becoming expert in 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 your in your um, practice. OK, I think for me, one of the yeah, something so, uh, in my class yesterday, someone, someone, someone called me an expert in cybersecurity. So to know, I'm not an expert. I have an experience, but I, I'm still learning. Yeah, so that means vulnerability over here. So although I know what I'm doing, but I I put myself in the fact that yeah, yes, I know what I'm doing, but I'm happy for you to t tell me what's going on as well. Happy for for us to have yeah, to debate about what's what was going on. Although I have the authority of the knowledge sometimes, but uh, that's my vulnerability over here. I say, look, that's fine for me. I'm happy to engage with you, to know what's going on, and then we learn from that point of view. Also, if you have actually, I'm, yeah, I'm a stammerer. I stammer a lot sometimes. So me being stammering allows me to say, look, by the way, I cannot pronounce some certain words for you. Yeah, but if it mean, mean even doing that, I will try to find a different way of doing this for you. So that allows me to tell them that's me as a person. And that allows them to link with me as individual, not as a somebody that is a bit more authoritative than them. Uh, uh, and if they, if I do that, I make them vulnerable myself, but again, have to have a boundary of vulnerability. Because sometimes if you if you show them too much about about who you are, they might they might be one of two of them. I, I mean, I've been teaching for about seven years now, roughly. I think I have two cases whereby they try to pass the boundary of vulnerability. So it's for you to say, okay, look, I am completely vulnerable to you, but I have an authority over you, also not over you, but also that's me as your own mentor. So I think it's, it's difficult. I mean, someone told me that in in the university, by the way. I mean, yeah, in, some, so, someone told me that I shouldn't be too friendly to my students. So then, look, that's me. I, although me be friendly and vulnerable to them, but it allows them to feel that, that they are part of me and because of that as time goes by. So that's what I mean by be vulnerability, and then that allows you to appreciate what's going as time goes by. Thank you. Uh, and again, some 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 comments coming in. Love the idea of vulnerability as bridging the gap. And definitely, I think you kind of have balanced it out uh, very clearly and very nicely. Um, sort of as as a concept that sits between sort of again being too friendly but also too authoritative, and and that sits kind of in the middle. Um, and also, again, I think you framed uh, very interesting uh, framing of the idea of expertise.